I want to start straight off with a question. Who do you think was your best teacher? Was it your, your teacher at school? Was it your parents, perhaps? Or a really good, inspiring lecturer? I have to tell you that when I thought about who my best teacher was, I realized it was none of those, but it was actually um, the, the bad stuff and the good stuff that's happened in my life, especially the bad stuff. And that uh, adversity that we all face, but we very rarely talk about, because these days we like to talk about a kind of airbrushed social media life, which is not really quite accurate. I would say that it's the, it's the bad stuff that's got me to where I am and uh, give me a lot of happiness, albeit some, some scares along the way. So today, I thought we might play a little game of snakes and ladders and I could tell you a little bit about my story. It all started um, uh, 71 years ago when I was born and um, I started by throwing a six because I was very fortunate to be born into a nice family, very supportive family who helped me to um, get a good start in life. And so that definitely got me on the beginning of the game of snakes and ladders, off to a good start. The first snake only arrived at the age of 10 when um, in the UK you have to sit an exam called the 11 plus. And um, I was young so I, start, I started doing it at the age of 10. But I failed. And so this was my first experience of a snake. And it wasn't a good experience because it meant I couldn't go to the best school I had to go to a different school and um, I really could have at that point gone off the rails and not achieved any academic or business standing. But I worked hard at school and I'm pleased to say that I, went, I ended up passing the exams that got me into university. I got a scholarship to go to St Andrews University in Scotland where I studied zoology. So that's how it was that um, we can start um, thinking about climbing up the ladders again. And so um, I had a happy time at university studying zoology. And uh, at the end of my time there, I didn't get a first, I got a 2-1, but it was enough for me to be allowed to stay on and do a PhD in the Gatti Marine Laboratory in Scotland. Uh, three more happy years, I might say. Um, I was studying marine invertebrates and um, published a number of papers. And at the end of that time, I thought, well, I'm going to have to get a job. However am I going to get a job? And by good fortune and uh, a great deal of luck, I ended up teaching zoology in Oxford, at the University of Oxford. And... Um, uh, the only fly in the ointment and the thing that petrified me to death, and even now I sometimes have dreams about it, um, was having to teach a subject about which I knew virtually nothing. And on the first day that uh, I arrived in the zoology department, I had a heavy dose of imposter syndrome, thinking they're going to find out I'm no good, and whatever am I going to do then? But this job, lasted for six years and um, they never did find out that I didn't really know very much about it. I knew enough clearly to, uh, to pass muster. Um, however, it wasn't a tenured post and anyone who's been in an academic world will know that a tenured post is what you need if you plan to stay employed for the rest of your life. Uh, and so I suddenly hit another snake and this was quite a serious snake. So I found myself uh, at the top of a snake and thinking, I'm going to have to get another job. Whatever am I going to do now? And so it was that um, I embarked on a completely new career, which I hadn't intended to do, uh, a publishing career in Oxford, um, uh, initially as an editor, then as a writer, and then eventually founding my own company. And that went on just fine. 
for about 10 years until my business partner and I fell out comprehensively. And, uh, and that company fell to bits. And I found myself out of a job again. I thought, I've got to go in a new direction. It was only after coming to terms with that and actually having some support from some very nice old clients who said, come on, Graham, we need you to do this stuff. And that's how it was that I started a new company, Oxford Pharmagenesis, uh, the company of which I'm now very proud to be the chairman. 400 people, um, three continents, and beginning to make a difference in the world, in the world of medical education. So when I look back over my life and I see where the opportunity was, it was where those snakes were. It was where the adversity was. And actually what I say to you is, it's horrible when bad stuff happens, but look on it as an opportunity. And I know you will because you were the ones who came up with this title, Opportunity and Adversity. And I have to say, it's a pleasure for me to be here today. But what I would leave you with is the thought that you're the inspirational ones. You're my inspiration. I'm sure that you're going to have very successful careers. So thank you very much.